Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, today is Friday, praise God. And listen, God's great plan. See, you know, when we say these things, you know, sometimes we just think we're talking. We're telling you the truth. And the more you hear it and hear it and hear it, and the hope is this, is you get to understand and believe so you begin to see the results in your life. Praise God. Listen, take out time to listen to everything we've been talking about since Monday. Use this weekend for that purpose. Find time. Replay them. Now, replay them one after the other so you get a full understanding of what we are talking about so far. Praise God. Can we call forth our daily bread from our Father's hand? Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father... I demand right now for my daily bread and I receive it from your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You see, please, I beg of you, never listen to anything that is not of value to your soul. Because you see, every information you get into your soul has a way of affecting your life. You know, sometimes people, I've, I've heard people ask me those questions. Why, why do you always talk about um, the, the knowledge of God, the, the things of God? The, why do you always, why don't you talk about, why don't you take topics like marriage and topics like finances and, and, and why don't you just take topics like that not because um, i cannot take subjects you know like that but i'll tell you the truth like i told you i think last week or two to, um, yesterday or two days ago you know there are things i've been long in this thing and i've seen the end of a lot of things i have by the spirit of god helping me more like when when um the preacher said in Ecclesiastics, he said, look, I've gone through the earth and I've come back. And then I've realized this thing. Everything is vanity. <laughs> now, now, not in that light, but then I've looked at this whole thing from different sides. And I found, I will tell you without fear. And because if I don't tell you, if I say some other thing, I'll, I'll be lying to you. I will tell you that concerning life, you know, Jesus said, if you continue, you will know the truth. I have known the truth. I can tell you that for free. I can tell you that for free. And, and knowing the truth is not something you, 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 you can't even pray. Then you now know the truth. It's by walking with the Lord consistently, having real dealings with the Lord. Then you will come to that place where you know the truth. So then you now realize that a lot of things people fight for, a lot of things people struggle to get. It's useless. Yes, I can tell you that for, for, for free. It's useless. Because at the end of the day, you will find out. Now, I'm sharing this with you so that you don't find this out at the end of your life. Yes. Some will not even know until they die. Some will not even know until the day we stand before the Lord. So what I'm telling you is not even for this life only. I'm telling you even for the life to come. Yes. There are things you will never understand until the day you stand before the Lord. And so sad that what you're going to understand then is like you wasted your time here on earth. There are things we fight over. There are things we struggle to become. And then you realize that so what was all the fight all about? Praise <laughs> God. Yes, because you now realize that those fights were not from your inside. They were not from the Lord. They were things that an outside force motivated you. And, and this is what I also found out. We can teach on marriage. We can teach on... I, I've actually been talking to my wife um, for us to do a series on, on marriage. We can teach on all those things, marriage and family, okay? But then I found out 
for you to be a good husband, for you to be a good wife. The secret is very simple. The knowledge of the person of God. Yes. For you to have your finances working. All you need to understand is the person of the knowledge, the, the knowledge of the person of God. For you to develop good character, for you, whatever, that is the one thing that if you can know wherever you put your head in, you'll be right. And you'll be all right. Yes. So when, when I take time to teach on these things and, 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 and the way I bring it out, now the way I bring it out is so that your eyes will be open to see. Because what you see, you begin to become. And once you begin to become what God, what you see, which is God, this is how it affects you. It begins to affect your day-to-day decision making. If you need to make decisions where your marriage is concerned, you make quality decisions. If you need to make decisions where finances is concerned, you make quality decisions. Now, what, what does the knowledge of God do to you? It takes away fear. Okay? It takes away fear. So I may not target, we're talking on finances, but by the time we are done, you realize that you're handling your finances better. I may not talk about marriage, but if you understand what I share, that's why I I just put up these videos. And trust me, these videos are just being stored up there. We're not even, we're not even taking any effort to push them out or promote them. That time will come. But we're just storing them up. Why? So that you, any day, you can just go through our YouTube channel and pick. That's what we teach on series. You take a series, sit down, listen, listen, listen. Each one is injecting something into your person. And what does it do to you? By the Spirit of God, this is what happens to you. Here you are naturally love making careless decisions. But when you start having an understanding of the Word of God, Here you are about to make a decision. You realize that there are some things that you become paralyzed about. Yes. Because it's what have helped me that I can share with you. I can't tell you something else. I can't import something else that I have not practiced. I have not put to test. I have not used. I can't tell you that. I will only tell you the one that is working for me. And knowing where it came from, that it came from the Lord, I can trust it. Praise God. So, everything, just, just take out this weekend, listing, 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 and share them. Yes, share them. I hear people say sometimes, hey, your teachings are very deep. It's good for you. You may not understand everything today, but keep listening, keep listening. Because I give it to you the same way I received it from the Lord. There are times you're like, okay, See, and then it will take me weeks, months, sometimes even years to fully understand what he said. There are things I've come to terms with, like, wow, Lord. Then I remember, the Lord told me this about three years ago. I said, ah, Lord, you told me this in three years ago, and you were right. So it took three years for me to understand his statement. But he said, already, I began to apply them. See, I was applying it. Why was I applying it? I trusted the one who spoke to me. So we'll teach you the deep knowledge of God so that it will enhance your relationship with God. So it will now, now when your heart is open for that, it will, it will, it will enhance the way God speaks to you. It will enhance the way God fellowships with you. Okay. So we, we may talk about, and when we start talking about marriage and, and finances, it's purely advice will be given. Oh, what, um, do it like this, do it like this, do it like this. But the real ingredients, the real thing that would make you, whatever you go into, whether you're male, female, old, young, whatever you go into, you're able to look at it and take the right decision is what we are teaching you on this broadcast. Praise <laughs> God. All right then. So I'll show you something about the personality of of the Godhead and yesterday we stopped at you know when Genesis chapter 1 okay we we got into Genesis chapter 2 Genesis chapter 2 I remember telling you that look 
from verse 1 to verse 3 of Genesis chapter 2, to me, they should have been in chapter 1 because now that ended everything. And then now we enter chapter, verse 3, Genesis chapter 2. And then he says, verse 4. Yes, verse 4, Genesis chapter 2. He says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day. In the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. Now, chapter 1, now he just told you that the, thus the, earth, the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them, okay? Now, how was it finished? It was the Father that created the heavens and the earth and the Father created it by his word. Now, here he says, this is the generation. This is the, I told you yesterday, this is, now what the Father created in six days, Please listen to me. What the Father created in six days before he rested, some of them have still not been um, formed till this day. Please understand what I'm sharing with you. They have not been formed. I'll give you a very simple example. The Father created man on the sixth day of creation, okay? In Genesis chapter 1, God created man on that day. But guess what? In creating man, he didn't just create Adam. You see that? That's one thing people don't know. Now, if you read chapter 1, Genesis, where God was created on the sixth day, he said, male and female created he them. Now, you see that in chapter 1. Okay? Chapter 2 is not like a reputation of chapter 1. No. In chapter 1, God created man. He created a male and female. Everything that had to do with man was created by God on that sixth day. Now, on that sixth day, God created every man that would be born into this world. On that sixth day, he wrote their names in his book. That's when the book of life was written. And the book of life contained the name of every human being that will be born on this earth. Say, so, did God know? Yes, he knew. <laughs> so when, when I hear people say God does not give children, they they sound so foolish. That, that The sound of it is so foolish. You know, Jesus said, you err because you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. God wrote a book before Adam was formed. It's called the book of life. And the book of life contains the names of everybody that will ever be born through God. I have, I have to put that caveat there. Through God, the book of life contains the name of everybody that's going to be born into this world. True God, okay? So, now you understand why uh, David will declare children are the heritage of the Lord, okay? They belong to God, see? So, God made the first man and then he made them, made man in such a way that man can reproduce, okay? So, when Adam was formed, I've also heard people say, oh, um, the the woman was made out of uh, need, like uh, God didn't plan to make the woman before. No, you can't say that because if you go back to the original, when God spoke, he said male and female, okay? Yes. But then in the formation, now this is what once you need to understand. In the formation of things, guess what? He created them as, uh, as the arrangement is. I'll give you an example. Now, that, this is why you shouldn't start thinking, I wish I was born in so-so-and-so country. I wish I was born in 1942. Or, have you ever caught yourself thinking that, man, people that lived on earth when there was no light, when there was no electricity, when there was no internet, how did they cope with life? Have you caught yourself thinking that they cope very well? And, and some go like, man, the world is spoiled. Maybe, maybe those people were too innocent. Maybe those that life at that time was better. Hey, everybody came according to their season and their timing, okay? Everybody was not to be born into the world straight like that. And let me also tell you this. There are more people on the earth that God has in his book. Yes. I'll say that again. There are more people on the earth today than God has in the book of life. Now, this is why you see we're going to talk about all these things. I'm just giving you snippets. Now, there, this is why you see in the book of Revelation, it says, anyone's name who's not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. 
Now I've heard people, preachers preach and say, those are people, the, no, those whose names are not in the book of life are people who did not get saved. No, this has nothing to do with salvation. This will shock you. This has nothing to do with salvation. The book of life has nothing to do with salvation. See, salvation is another level. Are you hearing me? Yes. Salvation is another level. Your name was in the book of life before Jesus came to die for you. You see, yes, that's if you are from God, except you are not from God. So those who are not from God, where are they from? That's another day's struggle also, praise God. But then you hearing the gospel and getting saved is, is, is you don't know what that means. The fact that you can hear the gospel and believe it, you don't know what that means. Some of you don't understand. And that's why you joke with your salvation. That's why you're waiting for somebody to encourage you, somebody to preach to you. <laughs> the day we'll talk about that, maybe you begin to prize your salvation greatly. Now then, what we're driving out is this. The, the Holy Ghost, after the Father finished creating everything and rested, the Holy Ghost took over. That's from Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. When he says this is the generation or this is the history, he is telling you how physical life began. Not what the father have done. The father has finished his own. He has rested. And like I told you yesterday, if, if after the father rested, nothing changed. Everything was still black. Then the Holy Ghost took over and movements began. So now you see the person of the father you can never see him you will never see him when if you go to heaven you will never see the father nobody will see the father how do you know the father he speaks so when you hear his voice you know he's there okay and and that's the same thing even in heaven angels don't see the father they can never see him yes even angels yes praise god so he speaks now the person of the Holy Spirit who began to walk here in Genesis chapter 2, you feel his presence. You feel his movements, okay? So he began to move things. He began to, he's the one that began to separate the firmament. He began to cause the, dog, the ground to produce. He walked into the soil, produced seeds and, and planted those seeds and they began to grow. He watered them. He, 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 that's the Holy Spirit for you. The Holy Spirit moves. He he does everything so, so he can move like a wind. He can, you can feel his, his presence. You can feel his movements. That's the person of the Holy Spirit. Remember where we started, where we started from? John said, no man has seen God at any time. Now I'm trying to explain to you why he said that. And I told you that he didn't mean nobody has really seen God. He was referring to the Father. Because John got what he said from what Jesus said in John chapter 6. Jesus said, not that any man has seen the Father. Okay? But when John said, no man has seen God, he wasn't talking about the entirety of God. He was talking about the Father. And the Father, you will never see the Father. Now, the Holy Ghost is the one that you will feel. You will not see the Holy Ghost. Please understand what I'm telling you. You will not see the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost came to me and, and he walked into my room. No. No. Praise <laughs> God. No. Now we can feel his presence. Now he's the one that carries the presence of God. He's the one that carries the voice of God. But you don't see a form and say, that's the Holy Spirit. No, sir. I used to think that way too until I was corrected by the Lord. I used to say, in the Old Testament, for example, there were manifestations of, of people who appeared as God. Okay? So I, I used to say, that's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And it sounded so right. Until the Spirit of God corrected me and said, no. And taught me what I'm teaching you now. The only person in the Godhead that can be seen is the word of God. Now, I don't have time today. We're going to go into the details of that. I kept that to be the last thing I'm going to talk about because it might take us a whole week to explain this part. Praise God. Yes, the only part 
of the Godhead that is visible, that you can see. Okay, and, and when those who have seen him now understand why when God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, he created this form. Yes, so those who have seen the word of God know that he has the shape. It's not shaped like an animal. It's not shaped. So say, God appeared to me like a lizard. No, please, that's not God. That's a demon. God will not show up like a lizard. <laughs> no, he will not. The only time God appears, does God appear? Has God appeared before many times? Does God still appear today? Yes, he does. So every appearance of God that you see in the shape of the man, it, it will be in the shape of the man. If it's not in the shape of the man, now someone say, a cloud filled my room. So God walked into my room. That's not God. That's the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit brought the presence of God and then you heard the voice of God. Okay. Now that's, that's, that's not God that appeared to you. That's not. So you don't say God is cloud. No. Each time God has appeared, he appeared like a man. Yes, I, I, you can mistake him. You can think he's a man. It's that simple. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> God. Listen, we, we have a lot we're going to talk about. So let me answer that question this week. So have men seen God? Yes, men have seen God. <laughs> Does that mean, John, I, I just explained it to you. What John meant is no man has or can see the Father. When he says the Father, he's separating that one, that very one. But men have seen God. We'll talk about this next week. I pray you have a wonderful weekend. And I pray that the Spirit of God will guide your mind and bring his thoughts to fill your heart. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.